My name is Fernando Garcia, and I'm here to cover background scripts. So what exactly is a background script? It's a freeform way of executing server-side code on the fly without the need of building a trigger or a script, like a business rule, for example. And so when would we exactly use a background script? So when we would actually use a background script is when you want to clean maybe small, decent amount size of data that doesn't require too many complex updates. There are ways where if you need to update records that could have a lot of scripts executing against it, as long as it's a small size or general decent size, not in excess, you could get around it. And I can teach you a couple of functions to get around that. So with that said, how do you get to a background script? Basically, you would want to search in the filter navigator background and under system definitions, you'll see scripts backgrounds. So you'll basically want to click that and it'll redirect you to this white screen page right here with a huge text area box where you can basically resize in the lower right corner however you need to. A couple of things that you'll notice at the bottom is you have the button for running the actual script. You also have in scope. So if you're familiar with the global, well, the application picker at the top, this basically functions in an identical way, but basically you're going to execute that script on whatever the application that you pick from here. Now you also have record for rollback. So when this is selected, usually you would leave it by default. Essentially all it does, it creates a record on the history for allowing you to roll back your transaction if you need to. Then you have these other two. These are not that common. Executing sandbox is more for restrictive rights. So if you're trying to execute a script and you accidentally invoke a method that you didn't want to invoke, like in a glide record, you call it insert. Basically this would stop you from doing those things, which might not be what your background is intended for. But if you're trying to be safe and you're just reading data and you just want to avoid any issues, maybe that might be an option for you. Scriptlets, that's actually introduced in the Paris version of ServiceNow. I think it's going to be used for future functionality. I'm not too familiar on it at the moment, but it's something that you could pretty much disregard when building a background script as of now. And then this one is self-explanatory. So when you execute a background script, your transaction can run for hours. And basically this one will kill it after four hours. Use this if you know that your script should finish in a reasonable amount of time and not more than four hours later, especially if you're worried that your script might accidentally be executing stuff that it's shooting or updating records that you definitely don't want in excess to be updated. Now, a couple of tips for the background script. There are two functions for starters that I would recommend that you guys read up on and basically learn a little bit more on how to use, but I'll cover them briefly. And that is set workflow false and auto sys fields. So set workflow false basically works by deactivating all types of server scripts that could execute against a glide record per se, right? And that could be a business rule, that could be a flow, workflow, whatever the like. This is extremely useful if you're just trying to target updating a specific field and you don't want the repercussions of any scripts triggering on that record, giving you unintended updates that you didn't want. Now, auto sys fields, on the other hand, is more related to system update fields. So this could be your created by, created on, updated by, and updated on such fields. So maybe you have a requirement from the business or whatever you implemented. You don't want to mess with the process. You just want to fix the data. And it might depend on the timestamps of those process that are basically these system fields. So if you set this to false, those fields will not get updated, even if you update the record. So if you're background script requires fixing data and you don't want any other timestamps getting modified, then you would want to use auto sys fields. Now, another thing to note as well is for the set workflow function, that actually also disables the audit history. So exercise with caution. If your plan is to update a record and you want it to be captured in the history, then do not use set workflow false 
because that will not allow you to see it in the history. And I'll show you a couple examples. So here I have already built a shell for basically querying an incident and updating the state simply. And in another tab, I have an incident. So I think I'll go ahead and pick this one. You can see created three months ago, it was updated two months ago and all this other information. So these two system updated fields, I'm gonna go ahead and open it. We're gonna take a look at the state. You can see that it's closed. So let's say I accidentally created a defect in the environment and it accidentally closed some incidents, right? So based on analysis, I found such and such incidents were impacted, whether an individual set or maybe something that marks them as part of my functionality. So let's say hypothetically, this is one that I identified and this one should be on hold per se, right? So what I'll do is I'll right click here, copy the SysID, come back to my query. I'm gonna go ahead and paste that SysID for that incident. And let's say, I don't want any of the rules to be triggered in case I change it to on hold. So I'm gonna set the workflow to false and also show you that the history is not gonna get updated either as an example. Now, I also don't want to affect the timestamps in whatever form, right? I wanna leave them the way they are now. So I'll keep this on. Now, I'm gonna go ahead and before I do incident update, this is, the most important tip on building a background script. And basically you wanna make sure you log what you're actually doing before you actually do the update. It's very important that you rigorously test to see what your background script actually does prior to actually making the updates because background scripts can be dangerous. You can accidentally update massive amount of data that you weren't supposed to update. You could impact it. Now, there is a rollback option, which I can go over in a minute, but I wouldn't really depend on the rollback that the platform offers. I would use that as a last resort or for very small things that you know for sure can be rolled back. If you have a complex script by any chance and you mess that up, rather than going for the rollback, try to build another fixed script to mitigate it. But on the first hand, try to always log your stuff and make sure that what you're updating is exactly how you want the results. Now, what I'm gonna do for this example, I usually like to put my initials because if I'm sharing the platform with other developers, I wanna be able to see my logs, right? So I'm gonna call this before, and then I'm gonna output the incident state display value Prior to being executed, I'll copy the logs here, paste that real quick, and then make that an after. So I commented out the update. I'll run the script and you can see before it was closed, that's the ticket that I have, and after it's on hold. Now, if you really wanna make sure what you're executing it against, you can also add the number here as needed. So I confirmed for this example that from close, it'll go to on hold. So I'm just gonna go ahead and update that. Now you can see that the update happens here. And if I click into this little link right here, it's gonna send me to the actual rollback sequence for that record. You can see some details there, in case you're interested in more details. And then the script execution history for what I executed. Now, basically the scripted execution history is very useful to see who executed what background scripts and what occurred. And there's also a need related links at the bottom where you can actually roll back your transaction. Now, before I even try that, I'm gonna go ahead and show you the incident. So let's go to the incident. You can see it changed to on hold. And if I reload the form real quick, you'll also notice that because I set the workflow to false, if I go to my history, there is no entry in the audit because I set the workflow to false. Now, going to my list view for that incident, you can see the timestamps are also unaffected because I also called the auto sys fields function and set that to false. So I preserved the timestamp and I did not trigger any business rule or any other triggered scripts on the glide record, which that also includes updating the audit, right? So that does not appear here as an entry. Now, let's say I messed up. I did not want to update that incident. 
So you usually would want to build a background script to try to fix it if at all possible. But if it seems very difficult and maybe you really want to go for a last resort or if it's something simple in nature like this, you could go to your script execution history for that script. And the way to do that in the platform is you can search for script execution history, go to the, the module under the rollback and recovery application and find the script that you executed. So the one that I executed here, let's find it by the most recently created. And then let's click on this one. And that's basically the script that I executed recently. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and click the rollback script execution and then go ahead and type yes, hit okay. It's gonna go ahead and execute the rollback and complete it. Now, if I go back to my incident, notice how it went back to the way it was closed. Keep in mind, if I had not set the workflow to false and the audit history was captured, this is not going to get captured in the history as well. So the rollback basically, I think also triggers the set workflow false function. So you can see that there's no audit update for the rollback right here. So it kept it back to the way it originally was. A couple of last things to know, if we go to the script execution history, keep in mind that this by default out of the box, these entries last seven days before they get deleted from the system. If by any chance you need to keep them more, you could always go to the sys auto flush table, find the script execution history table and change the age in seconds if you wanna preserve them for more than seven days. That's it for background scripts. Thank you for tuning in.